Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes when your eyes see the travails of your soul, you have mixed feelings. Upon this program, we spoke clearly this year, months ago, concerning what we are seeing happening, that we have entered Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, that the earth is burning. Not only in Nigeria, all over the world, there will be bloodshed, people dying through sicknesses and all that. And these things are dress rehearsals for the emergence of the glorious church and also the coming or the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is called the rapture. But looking at what has happened so far, I, I, I feel like crying, especially in Nigeria and some parts of the world, the way lives are wasted. I remember what uh, the former president of Nigeria said. I, I read, I wasn't there when he said it, that his personal ambition or his political ambition is what it is not what uh, the life of any Nigerian or any person. But it is serious, heart rending when people don't consider the lives of people, essentially the youths that are the future. You know, they don't consider them. The, the concerning their businesses, their money, their political ambitions. I wonder how those people think they will end. Beloved, there is an end. Surely there is an end. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18. There is an end. And Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8. It says the end of a thing is better than the beginning thereof. In other words, how we end is how people will remember us for. I look at the Nigerian history, those who were playing around with people's lives in the time past. Some of them are still alive, but they are like vegetables now. They cannot move. They have gotten their payday. There is a payday, and that should drive us. There is a payday. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Oh, I hope that people will get these things clear. It said, The Lord shall recompense. That word recompense means repay. That word recompense means to pay back. That is a particular payback. The Lord will recompense tribulation upon them that trouble you. In other, in other words, as people trouble you, God is preparing a payday for them. Whatever you make happen in the lives of other people, God will make happen in your own life at his own time. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That's the way it works. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. He said, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. He said, Give, and it shall be given back to you. That's your payday. Good measure, shaking together. Press down shall men put in your bosom. Which means, what you sow deceived, but what you are getting is a plantation. Either good or bad. There is a payday. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, oh God, he says, oh God, what is happening now is heart rending that a country, a leadership that is meant to protect their own people, they are using their hands to kill their own people, using the power given unto them, not knowing that it's a payday. And let me tell you, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says there is a payday. There is a pay time, there is a time and a season to every purpose on earth. You can think you have power now and you are using the power wrongly. There is a payday. Beloved, there is a payday. The seed you sow, you soon reap it. There is a payday. Look at what Adoni Bezek, King Adoni Bezek said in Judges chapter 1, verse 6. When the children of Israel demolished the Canaanites and, uh, and the, all of them. They went to Bezek and they saw Adoni Bezek. They pursued him, conquered him, and then they cut off his great toe and his thumb. Adoni Bezek said in verse 7 something that is so touching. He said, this is a hidden king. He said, this same thing I did to kings. And their great toes cut off, and their thumbs, and they are on my table, they are at the ground, taking their food around me. That is like dogs. And he says, the Lord, 
the Lord, he knows that it is God. He said, the Lord has recompensed unto me the thing I did to those ones. He said, today is my own payday. And that is what he was honest enough to know. And they took him to Jerusalem and he died. He recognized that, that I did the same thing to others. And this same thing has caught up with me. Beloved, you can escape men, but you can't escape God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 8. He said, whatsoever a man does to another man. He said, the same, the same, the same shall God do to that man. It is not men, God will do it to you. So you can't escape from God. The worst part of it is that it does not end with you. Whatever we do here on earth impacts our children. That's the way it happens. It becomes a plantation, collective captivity upon our children and our generation. God for, forgive us. God forgive us. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 2, he said, our parents, they drank so grape, and he said, we, we were not there when they did it, but we, our teeth is now on age. You understand? It, it, it is absurd. That means they did that thing, and they paid for it, and we are still paying for it as children. I pray today that any evil inheritance upon you, that you are suffering from collective captivity, that is paralyzing your life by the mercies of God. I release you from that today in the name of Jesus. And to understand it, Lamentation chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Our parents sinned and they are no more, but we are now bearing the consequences of what they did. So the pain they caught up with them and it is catching up with us. The Bible says, A good father liveth a good inheritance for the children, children, children. That is the way it happens. So, you, you, you either leave a good inheritance or a bad inheritance. You make your choice. History, contemporary history shows the same thing happening. Walk around the street. Look at some of the houses built in the 60s, in the 50s, look, built in the 70s, out of illegal, illicit wealth. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11. Just watch how they are ending and how their children are now. Jeremiah 17, 11 says, wealth got in, ill gotten wealth without right will make you to die untimely and you end up like a fool there is a payday beloved understand that why do you have to put your children in trouble what end do you want proverbs chapter 16 verse 25 he said there is a way that seems right unto a man and the end thereof are the ways of death that is there is no other option any option you take it leads to death so why do you want to end badly? Better is the beginning, the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Why not begin today to stand with God? Don't say they push you. You can be in the police, you can be in the army, you can be in any of the military or paramilitary. And you say they gave you. Then you can resign. You can be a governor. You can be uh, whatever. Don't tell us that the forces are beyond you. You take a stand for God and God will take a stand for you. Whatever you lose standing for God, what God will give you something better than it. So God will always stand with you as you stand with him. But when you need to take a stand with God and you take a stand with the devil and you're telling me that the force is greater than you has done it. No, sir. You have your choice. You, know, you have your choice. Take a stand with God and you will never lose in the affairs of life. Elijah took a stand with God and he never lost out. Daniel took a stand with God. He said, stand with God and he got a whole nation bowing to God. Daniel chapter 6. And you know that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they took a stand for God. A whole king in Daniel chapter 3. And the whole nation came bowing because they didn't bow. So don't bow. Don't use any position to bow. Take a stand with God now. That is what God is saying. What the Christians call rapture, which is the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, is not far. It is just out there. Don't allow any position any monetary inducement or whatever favor of men ever push you to do the wrong thing stand with god john chapter 5 verse 41 and 44 jesus said which honor do you want the honor of man verse 44 he said better you go for the honor of god it is enduring it is sustainable the honor of god is here and there godliness is profitable unto all things 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Godliness is standing with God. He said here and in eternity. So beloved, life is a choice. And the choice you make moment by moment determines where you stand, either with God or with the devil. 
anything that leads into compromise is not God. You have to be hot, not to be lukewarm. He said, you either hot or you are cold. Don't be lukewarm. Revelation chapter 3. He said, I'll screw you out of my mouth because you have not taken a stand. You are lukewarm. I pray you will not miss the garden of your destiny. Adam and Eve missed it. They were chased out. I pray that that thing you are trying to secure, to keep by compromises that you don't lose it at the end of the day and then you are disgraced out of there. I'm talking as a prophet because all we are seeing now, I from so many years back, I've said that last year I began to hammer it, this year I began to hammer it and it is working. Go to the YouTube, listen to some of the messages. You see that everything is just happening the way it has been said. It has not come when we are saying this. Praise God. And just go. Go to the YouTube. You understand? House of Fresh Fire. You will see the messages there. And you see everything is playing out. Beloved, I want you to listen to this young man. And hear what he has to say. They now will come to pray for us. And they make up your mind to say, I will not end like my ancestors ended. Like the other ones ended. I have to do things now to secure my tomorrow, my great future. I don't have to sow a seed today that will bring a bad harvest. Remember, this is our year of overflowing harvest. The seed you sow determines the harvest you get. I pray you will not reap an evil harvest in the matchless name of Jesus. Brave and gallant Nigeria soldiers, I speak to you not as an outsider, but as a victim of the callousness of the federal government of Nigeria. Being a child of a soldier myself, my father died in the service of Nigeria. After his death, we, his family, were treated like rags. Before you are deployed and asked to shoot and beat up innocent civilians, embarking on peaceful protests to fight for their rights, remember, you are a Nigerian first, and your duty is to serve this great nation, not to any politician. This fight is not a fight against the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but it is a fight for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We hear your cry. We see your frustrations. How long will you be deployed to the front line to fight Boko Haram and Iswap with no weapons? Many of your colleagues are falling to the wickedness of these same politicians who are asking you to come out now and shoot and beat up innocent protesters fighting for the future of the same Nigeria you swore to protect. So many Nigerian soldiers have lost their lives fighting a war they know nothing about. How long will they continually waste your lives on a meaningless fight that is sponsored by the same politicians? So many Nigerian soldiers have gone missing, killed and buried in shallow graves and their wife and children lied to that they are in the front line while they are six feet under the ground. After you are killed in war, your family is thrown out of the barracks and treated like rag. Brave and gallant Nigerian soldiers, how long will your benefits be diverted into the pockets of these greedy politicians? How long will retired soldiers die just to collect their pension after serving this great country? How long will your gallant colleagues be gunned down in a war sponsored by these same politicians? How long will the Nigerian military be one of the least funded and most poorly paid soldiers in the world, while the Nigerian politicians line his pockets with billions and billions of money meant for our future? This fight is not a fight against the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This fight is not a fight against the police or the army. This fight is for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Brave and gallant Nigerian soldiers, change is imminent. We call on you today not to be used as pawns by these politicians to call peaceful protests across the nation. We call on you today to put the future of your family and your children first. At the end of this fight, we will all be better for it. Aua. Hallelujah. And I want to believe, oh God, looking at this peace, tears coming to me, I want to believe that the military and the Nigerian government don't want to start an asymmetrical war with the youth because the Nigerian youth, they are great people and they have become a global tribe. That is the interesting thing. It has never been like this. They are a global tribe now and wonderfully well organized. This is a protest that everybody is proud of. Well organized. 
everything put in place and the same government you are the one hiring the hoodlums the politicians hiring the hoodlums and everybody will know that because this protest okay if you say that you are sending the military to quench protest sir why did you just send them to Faba? where they were still fighting and still fighting until this morning where the hoodlums are preaching why did you just send them to relay where they bought down things why you are sending them to Lakey to protect somebody's business Lakey where there was no problem peace there was no violence you went to remove the cctv cameras you put up the light what a genocide premeditated calculated murder how of a youth of a future it has never been this bad these are the kind of things you hear it's like it didn't happen i'm here to recover from that reality even that god showed us these things and we said them but seeing it happen now i'm here to recover oh the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know it jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 there is a payday there is a payday. There is a payday. What you sow, you shall reap. Why go to slaughter innocent youth, great youths? Why? You didn't slaughter the hearts men, the hearts boys that are destroying people in the north. You didn't send the military against them. You have not prosecuted one that have been destroying villages, destroying Satan Kaduna. You have not done that. You have not dealt with the Boko Haram. The Cameroonians drove them away in one single, and you didn't do that. Innocent use, unarmed, unarmed. The only arm they have is their intellect, creativity to give us a great future, and you are slaughtering them. There is a payday. There is a payday you shall reap. That's if you have children. You have laid a bad inheritance for your children. I pity those children because. They didn't take permission from you because they're enjoying the lights you're getting from these things and you don't understand it that you have destroyed the future of those children as far as they're enjoying any money you are getting from this rubbish because it's a total rubbish my god will recompense tribulation upon anyone that trouble another person you are troubling people look at the cries women losing their children eh? men losing their children people losing their brothers and their sisters gruesome murder we have not seen a thing like this it's a total shame unarmed there's no violence if you say you are quenching violence why didn't you go to faba where they were literally fighting the hoodlums you kept there why didn't you go to relay the boys at alausa the boys at the uh, lagos toll gate site at uh, beja and all that and at lakey they conducted themselves and proud of our youth I'm proud of our youth. You have put in place an asymmetrical war against you. And that war, God is the leader. I'm telling you. God is the leader. You can't point at anybody again to kill. God is the leader. I can tell you in your bedroom, you will get the recompense there. There is a payday. Youth of Nigeria, thank you for doing this great service for God. I know my God will never let you down. Will never let us down. Great youth, great Nigerians, you have become a global tribe. You have become a global tribe. But please, don't go their way of violence. Go on your prayer work, which you have been doing, and go into this asymmetrical war against the forces of wickedness. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 5 says, This is wickedness. This is wickedness. And Zechariah chapter 5 verse 8, This is wickedness. This is wickedness. This is wickedness. Thank you. Remember, it is loving God. It is loving people. Touching lives positively and serving our God. I am fresh fire. We are missionaries with urgency in our spirit on a mission to connect to the world with God's presence and God's love. Don't forget, please, don't go into physical violence. No, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling.
If you shout and don't eat, verse 10 goes on. Please, don't go. They are trying to tempt you to go their way so that they can have you to do more at Just started. It's a revolution, God's revolution. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations. You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.